So I want to talk about skeletal muscle fiber types. Um, before that, I want to briefly tell you how muscles get their energy source, um, get ATP, and that's going to relate to the fiber types. So first, let's talk about energy for muscles. So when I say energy for muscles, what do they use? ATP. So muscles need to use ATP for what? Well, they use ATP for pumps. Um, and that's in order to maintain that high um, sodium outside and potassium inside that's critical for the resting memory potential. They need the pump for calcium to put calcium into the SER. so that we can have relaxation um, and then contraction again. And then, really important one, they need ATP for the myosin cross bridges to form and then detach again, so that power stroke that actually allows for contraction. So that's a big one. Um, so bottom line is our cells, our, our muscles cell especially, all our cells though need to make ATP. ATP can be broken down from various um, nutrients, but glucose, we will, we'll use glucose as an example. There's, I'm not gonna do a ton about metabolism in a different chapter on that. Um, but if we have glucose, that might get converted into glycogen for long-term storage. Um, so this is our cell, or it might get converted into ATP broken down so that the cell can do stuff. That is one big source of ATP um, of, of three different methods. So I'm gonna show a picture here to go over these. Um, these two here are both gonna use primarily glucose. Um, so one is the anaerobic pathway. This means that it does not use oxygen. Um, instead, it is glycolysis that is a breakdown of glucose um, in the cytoplasm to form 2-ATP and lactic acid, which probably contributes to muscle soreness. The aerobic pathway uses that same first step. So I'm actually going to write in here, this is also glycolysis, this first step here to make pyruvic acid. But then we can take up that pruvic acid into the mitochondria and using oxygen, um, a cellular respiration occurs and makes 32 ATP, so a lot more. So this can provide a lot more time of energy um, by the number of ATPs it, it produces. The other way of producing ATP is from creatine phosphate. So this is a different mechanism that takes ADP and adds a phosphate group. So this phosphate group is going from creatine phosphate to ADP, creating ATP. So this is a really important, um, much quicker way of recovering ATP after it's been used, broken down into ADP in the cell. So this pathway, this direct phosphorylation, kinases phosphorylate or add phosphates to other molecules. Um, in this case, taking it from creatine, put it onto um, ADP to make ATP. That is important in all muscle cells. These two are going to happen differently depending on the muscle fiber type. So aerobic and anaerobic happen in different fiber types. One thing before I talk about that is muscle fatigue. Um, I'm not going to talk about a whole lot, but it can often occur from not having enough ATP, right? So ATP depletion, that could be because of um, low levels of, of creatine phosphate or kinase um, after it's been, a lot of this has already happened. Um, it could be because of oxygen running out, glucose running out. Um, it also could be because of ion imbalances. So um, we have to have ion imbalances, phosphates present. So things that are indirect of ATP depletion itself can also contribute to muscle fatigue. 